Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Rim Shots with Sean, brought to you by Barstools and Band Talk. And um, I have a fellow here that I've never met, but I feel like I know him through a mutual friend, and that would be the one, the only, Mr. Jason Benoit. How you doing, sir? How you doing, bud? I'm doing great. I, and first off, I had to say something. I had to make some crack about you got a, a handsome musical director. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris Buddy, he's the man. Yeah, we, we we both laugh at that, but I will say he's uh, he's become my uh, my guru because if, if there's any gear that I am thinking about getting, he's either had it researched or he researches it for me. So he's uh, he's fantastic. <laughs> So how are things going? For, how are things going for you? Have you been uh, have you been up to much? Or you're getting ready to kind of start cranking things out here shortly. Uh, yeah, music wise, I mean, it's been it's been uh, pretty crazy in the last year in regards to new like uh, releasing new music and working on new music and stuff like that. So um, I know March thirty first, I've got this, uh, an EP coming out. Uh, this is second side to a two sided album. Uh, side A and Side B. It's called Time Traveler, the album, and uh, that'll be coming out March 31st. And so, uh, yeah, that's been you know a ongoing project since 2020. Uh, it's just uh, you know between getting it because uh, that's uh, 13 songs all together between getting it recorded and and you know getting everything lined up for release and and just uh it's been a long process and and uh, like i said we split the album up in two so it's uh, we released the side a last uh, march and now we're releasing the second side coming up well that's interesting and, and i'll ask you about that because you know people have different strategies in terms of you know how they get music out and some people go with singles Is, was that a strategy that you know you didn't want to release the whole thing all at once uh because you know you wanted two separate things out in the marketplace like, what was your strategy behind yeah. that yeah yeah it's a it's a, well it helps people digest the music a little more too i find that people are this, this not only me but like a lot of people in the industry find that people's attention spans aren't near as as good as they used to be and people are so used to just getting singles and singles and singles coming you know uh, every other day i mean there's just there's so much music now and so i'm like well i'll just release it half and half just so that people can digest the songs a little better instead of just listening to the actual like radio singles on it and uh it also helps too because of streaming um the way they have it set up is that when you release a album there's only one song off the album that you can use as a focus track Hmm. And uh, and um, that once you, you once that's done, you can't say. So if I decide to release a second single to radio off of that same album, um, streaming doesn't recognize it as a new song unless I re-release it as a radio version or something like that. So they won't push it to um, different um, playlists. Uh, after the fact so it's uh, it's a one shot kind of a deal right so I think that's another reason why stream uh, a lot of people are just releasing singles too it's just because the system seems to be set up to benefit those who are releasing singles instead of albums so uh, it just it gets more of a um, it gets more reach when you release less songs than more now which is crazy um, I was going to say the system seems to be set up to find you know more more new improved ways for musicians to not make money <laughs> well yeah you're not wrong <laughs> right well i mean if you think about it like what you're saying there it's, it, a, it's a business and they, they want them they, they make the money and, and and you know if we make some money that that's good for us that's it's, it's lucky but you know they're they're worried about their pockets not ours well and it's interesting right because like you know back in, in you know when i was first coming up I mean the goal was to get a record deal and a record deal usually meant that you went deep in debt because you get an advance to get new gear or record or whatever so before you even sold a single you know vinyl record or CD or cassette or whatever um, you know you were maybe five hundred thousand dollars in debt um, nowadays uh, that doesn't necessarily happen but it just seems like they get you on the other end right like they you, you um, they do it by allowing you to not make money. 
Well, I mean, the music is free. Right, right. <laughs> you can, everybody can listen to the music for free. So, I mean, uh, when things are free, uh, people tend to not make as much money as if they were being, but if it was being purchased. It's just, that's just common sense. So, uh, uh, but I mean, that's the, that's the way it is. That's just the way it's set up. And I mean, you can make money off of streaming, no doubt, but I mean, you, you've got to be into the millions and millions of streams before you can make any money off of that. And we, uh, as opposed to selling a, you know, a CD for 20 bucks, um, and they may only listen to it once, but at least you, you know, you made 20 bucks off that CD, right? So, um, you're talking like tenths of a cent instead of uh, a couple of dollars per song. So it's a, it's a, it's a huge, uh, I think it's an, I think it's, it's an, it's an issue. It's just, we, we don't really have anybody to stand up for artists. You know, that's a like, great how point. Can, how can art, how can artists go up against billion dollar companies? It's impossible. You know. That's a great point, and, um, and I, I, for anybody that's just kind of getting in here uh, halfway through, I'm, I'm talking with uh, with Jason Benoit, and by the way, I go over to our uh, channel, Barstools and Band Talk, and subscribe. It is a great point that you're talking about, right, and that's, um, like, you hear, like, the days back in, you know, when Motown Records and, you know, the artists made no money because, you know, the, the, the rub was get signed and they would put them out on the road and maybe make enough to, you know, pay their bills barely, but the record companies had all the publishing, they owned all the songs, they owned every, they owned the artists pretty much, right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. And so, you you just kind of have a different version of that now, like, I, I think initially, and this is just my opinion, oh man, you can stream, you can get it on the internet, you can have all this stuff. People kind of didn't have the foresight to see the fact that we're going to go down a tunnel it's going to take us a long time to get out of. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, it's uh, it's really no different than it was back in, in the fifties. Uh, just a different, just a, you know, it's, it's just done differently. Like said. So that. But, um, but but I mean, there's uh, uh, there, there's ways to. to uh, there's there's not a whole lot of way to get around that, to be honest. Uh, yep. I mean, again, there's some money in streaming, but not near as much as obviously you'd like to be. But uh, you know, you, you, hopefully, that artist can make the money up on the uh, on the, the touring side. And even at this day and age, is getting really tough to do. <laughs> well, I do want to talk a lot for sure, um, but yeah. I, I guess where I'll where I'll go before that is so you put the first release out. So uh, you were happy with the results of, of that first release when it went out there. Oh, 100%, yeah. yeah. I feel good. I mean, I with the first, when the first uh, side A came out back in March, I mean, I got, um, uh, uh, you know, I, I got uh, my press release out, and I, I was able to speak with ET Canada and ETalk and, uh, you know, uh, Global, National. And, but I was, I did, you know, I, I've got, I got some great marketing on that album, and, and uh, you know, a lot of people liked it. And I thought it was a cool, uh, you know, it was a change in, in my style, which uh, uh, for the better, uh, which is, I mean, I've been doing this 10 years, so when somebody says that, then that's good, <laughs> I think. Well, and I mean, so, you, uh, you've always got to stay ahead of the curve of, like, you know, just when you think you've got something tackled, somebody comes up with something else that you go like, oh, right? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. And and I think the benefit for me is is uh, the style of music I'm releasing now is is a lot more traditional uh, '90s country sound, and uh, and that's that's pretty much my wheelhouse. That's what I grew up uh, playing and singing. Like uh, some are, you know, some a lot of country heroes came in to country from rock. Right. You know, like they were rock stars who, and then rock radio went away, and then. Uh, you know, they had nowhere to go. So uh, the style of the country changed and it allowed them to come into country, which is fine, you know, and, and it's, we had some great music. But the only thing is, is I think right around now is that, uh, you know, country music has changed into to a little more traditional style. So I think the people who came in from different genres might have a little bit of a challenge on, on how to approach it and have it sound genuine. But luckily for me, like that makes, again, that's where I came from. That's why I grew up with singing and playing. So uh, I mean, I, I love the new, I love this new style and new direction. I'm really proud of this new music. That I'm well, and you always, I mean, you, I guess you always know when a genre is becoming popular when. Um, you know, people that 
really aren't part of it become part of it. So, you know, as an example, like, you know, Bon Jovi's a good example, right? Like, they kind of went a little bit country for a bit. Um, and I would have to be thinking, you know, uh, you know, the initial thing is because you don't argue with John, but yeah, hey, John, we're welcome. But some of the traditional people be going like, oh, right on, they're just trying to make a buck here. Um, <laughs> and it's, but Steve it's a, Tyler did the same thing, right? But it's a great point that um, you know, to me, and I mean, I, I wouldn't, pers- you know, I wouldn't profess to be a, a country, uh, you know, historian, but to me, that kind of seems a little contrived. I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. I mean, it's 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 a compliment in a way because it just. I think it just goes to show how far country music has come since, since say the seventies, eighties. You know what I mean? Right. So, with it, there's nothing wrong with that. And I mean, and um, I mean, it has its benefits. And, and, and I don't think there's really any disadvantages. If it brings more people to the genre, it is what it is. You know, people are gonna like what they're gonna like at the end of the day and listen to what they're gonna listen to. So I don't think it really hurts anything. That's a good point. I mean, and I mean, some of the older church, like. You know, I used to, I had an uncle that used to listen to the older country stuff, and I just, what I liked about it was, like, the storytelling. Oh, 100%. Um, And, you know, there was writers that, um, and this is just my personal opinion, it's not to beat up on anything, but there was writers that would write for, you know, uh, you know, a William Nelson or or, or a George Jones would write their own stuff, but writers would write as well, but it was like, you kind of got the sense that what was being written was actually being lived, and now I kind of feel like, you know, seven people are sitting around a table going, how can we make people, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, it's a, To me, it seems oh, a little yeah, more contrived. Definitely. Well, the thing, the thing of it is, is, is you got, um, yeah, like you said, there's seven people in a room trying to write, <laughs> trying to write a one country song. And then, and then what happens is, uh, if the people aren't from that style of life or have some kind of a story to tell in their song, they often sing about being country, and I noticed. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's a crap ton of songs in the last 10, 15 years about what it's like to be country, instead of songs that are actually stories, real stories of something that happened to somebody who was country. And you don't have to, you know, if it's real, if it's and, and like the songs, the songwriting. It just speaks for itself that it's a country song, right? And and I find a lot of because people didn't really know what to, to do in the writing side of it, they said, "Well, I'm from the country. I've got this. I've got that." You know, like and there's so many songs like that in the last I don't know, 10, 15 years that they're like, "Oh my god!" It's like it's it's, just, it's uh, exhausting. And, and I mean, I came from the again, I came from like 80s, 90s country, which was had such great, great stories and. Um, and, and, and before that too I mean I love George Jones I mean uh, George Jones was a huge influence for me and like his tunes the, the soul country soul in those tunes man was just so 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 strong I mean you could feel it there, there, one line of a word from George uh, of a song from George Jones I mean you could just you could feel so much in, in just that and that's where I got my influences from and I think I hopefully got a, like, a lot of that across in these, in these new um, new albums because it's uh, you know, it's important to me I love that stuff I mean I love the stuff that makes you feel something instead of just uh, you know just a superficial kind of country right yeah and you know um, I liken it to, to this so you know I'm a rock guy. I look like a rock guy. I mean, you meet me, I look like the drummer from Pantera. Um, when I play drums, I, I hit them hard. I, you know, um, and Potty and I joke all the time, like, I'm going to do a studio and record it. And he goes, let's check the drums. And I hit them. And he's, well, you hit a lot harder than I do. And it's, I do, right? If I was to go to a jazz club and play jazz, it'd be like, ah, come on, Sean, really? Like, I, I, so that that's kind of the feeling that I have. Like, and I don't want to say anybody's making a buck, but I remember one time, I can't remember who it was, but a rock singer went on and did a country tune and it was uh, always on my mind by Willie Nelson and, and he introduces oh, yeah. this, the, 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 the song that reminds me of my parents breaking up and I'm sitting there going what a neat statement because there's, there doesn't in any genre there doesn't seem to be that connection anymore it's just kind of a cookie cutter let's get her out there and on to the next sort of vibe yeah and you know I think a lot of that had what it's got to do with radio um, what's happening is radio doesn't wouldn't touch a, a slow story song with a with a ten foot pole unless you're already in the top ten on right. radio. You know, uh, if not, and if you're just trying to, you know, just, if you're not in, in the top forty at all, 
that's the first song they'll turn down because they only reserve the good story songs for artists who are already uh, you know well established and, and currently charting so uh, it, it forces people uh, songwriters to write stuff that's not uh, that's really you know uh, more Yeah, and I, I agree with that. So I tell you what we're gonna do, sir. We're going to uh, we're gonna end segment one here. We're gonna come back with yep. segment two, and if uh, in the next segment, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk about. Um, you made a great point uh, a few minutes ago about live performance, and 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 you know that's how you were making money. Now it's harder, and I just uh, I want to tackle that when we come yeah. back. Yeah, for sure. Back with Jason Benwell after this.